Hello, my name is Bob Hodge. I'm president of Advanced Spindle Technology, and uh, we'd like to welcome you here. We're uh, doing this video from our North Carolina headquarters in Winston-Salem. And uh, I'd like to share with you today uh, some of the things that we look at uh, as we're going through evaluations of spindles, uh, as, you know, we're going through the teardown and we're looking at components. We're also, as we're doing that, we're looking at uh, the fundamental design of the spindle and, uh, and what you're doing with the spindle. Are you milling with it? Uh, are you cutting aluminum? Are you cutting titanium? Is it mostly steel? Is it cast iron? What is it? Because we're looking for ways as we're going through to improve the performance of that spindle for the way you're using it. And one of the things that we do that differs a little bit from um, some of our uh, competitors is when we're going through and we're looking at uh, bearing interchanging, we're looking at the bearings, what brand came out of it. And uh, most all bearing companies will have an interchange list. In other words, this one happens to be from SNFA, which uh, <laughs> really no longer exists. But uh, they have an interchange. If you have a Barden uh, B7000, then you know they have a, it's an ISO 10, they have an EX series. And the same thing with Fafner, GMN, NSK, RHP, so on and so forth. Everyone has what they call an interchange for one of their competitor's bearings. Here's another example from GMN. I mean, all bearing companies have these, uh, these types of interchange listings. However, uh, there are quite a lot of differences between one bearing to the next uh, in terms of internal geometry, in terms of architecture, just because they have a series, is it a, is it a large ball bearing? Is it an intermediate ball? Is it a small ball? Is it 17 degree contact angle? Is it 15 degree contact angle? Um, so what we're looking at is we go through in quite a lot of detail. And one of the things I wanted to uh, share with you here is even though the bearing can fit in the same envelope, it's still an ISO 10, it's a 70 series bearing, look at the difference in ball complements and the size of the ball, the uh, number of balls in there, that has a dramatic impact on the speed capability of the spindle, the load carrying capacity of the spindle, um, and we pay attention to that. Uh, we don't necessarily just take the manufacturer's word for it that this bearing will retrofit that bearing. Uh, we also look at, well, the bearings that we took out, has the spindle been repaired before? Uh, is it the OEM bearing? And really, even beyond that, how fast is the spindle running? How are you using the spindle? What is the load capacity of the, uh, the bearings that we're going to be using? And what's the speed capability? So that's the reason when you get one of our repair reports, uh, you will see uh, we have a whole section on the bearings. Here is, and this, uh, this is the, the front two bearings of a spindle. Uh, that's uh, grease lubricated. The bearing arrangement is uh, a duplex pair of bearings back to back with a spacer in the front. It's a pair of bearings in the back with no spacer. Fixed floating arrangement. And what we took out is this bearing. And you can see here's the manufacturer's part number, here's the manufacturer, what kind of bearing it is. Uh, in this particular bearing, the bearing sorts, the uh, sort for the ID and OD, uh, were not uh, visible. Um, the cage configuration, this is a molded OD guided cage and it's made from polyamide. It's PA66, it's glass fiber reinforced nylon. It's 15 degree contact angle, it has 6.74 uh, diameter balls and there's 19 of them. Uh, here's the width and the reason the bearing failed was it had contamination. If we look at what we use there, we chose to go in with an FAG bearing. It's an HCB, it's a ceramic. Um, it's an ISO 19 um, uh, size bearing, uh, but it's also shielded. And oftentimes we will use shielded bearings in grease applications to provide another layer of protection uh, from contamination getting inside the bearing. They're a little more expensive, but that's the right way to do it. 
Uh, <clears throat> we also went with a machined OD guided phenolic cage. And the reason we don't really like using uh, the molded polyamide cages is their temperature limited to 225 degrees. Um, even though the, uh, the spindles don't run that fast, uh, the uh, temperature limitations of the polyamide uh, is just not something that we think we should make that concession on in the bearing design. Uh, here we have a little bit larger ball, so there's more capacity. Instead of 6.74, we have 7.144. And instead of 19 balls, we have 20 balls. Uh, so one of the things, you know, how, how do we uh, justify saying that uh, you know, we're building spindles better than new because we're using better bearing. So um, at any rate, if you would like to, uh, to have us evaluate one of your spindles and see if we can make some improvements on it to make it better than new, then please reach out to us on our website or contact me directly. Thank you for your attention and your interest, and I look forward to hearing from you soon.